S. H. Kalkar and Company Limited's earning conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Meet Shah from CDR India. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Sagar. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on SH Kilkar and Company Limited's Q4 and F524 earnings conference call. We have with us Mr. Kitar Vaze, full-time director and group CEO, and Mr. Sraugi, EVP and group CFO of the company. We will begin the call with opening remarks from the management, following which we will open the forum for a Q&A session. Before we begin, I'd like to point out that certain statements made on today's call could be following in nature, and a disclaimer uh, in this effect has been included in the opening present in the earnings presentation shared with you earlier. I'd like to invite Mr. Kedar Vaze to make his opening remarks. Thank you. I know to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this earnings call today. I hope you have gone through our results document, which were uploaded to the exchanges earlier. I am pleased to report that we have delivered a strong financial performance throughout the past year while witnessing a subdued demand scenario in the domestic FMCG sector. Our performance was supported by revival of demand from mid-size and smaller customers, traction from new accounts, and steady performance in the key international markets. Our core European segment has reported consistent positive results showing healthy revenue growth and strong gross margins and EBITDA margins, despite a generally subdued demand environment in the European region. We have sustained our margin performance during the quarter, aided by various strategic initiatives. The region, which accounts for around 27% of our business, has also contributed to our growth trajectory, particularly as the recovery of business supported by both creative fragrances and flavors and Holland aromatics. These results underscore the resilience and strategic importance of our European operations for the group. In a key business development, we are extremely pleased to announce that we have gained significant sales traction from the prestigious global MNC account. We now have a healthy order book for FY25 for the customer for multiple products across few categories. This amounts to more than double the value of the previous financial year. We expect this relationship will continue to grow over the years, make marking a significant milestone in our strategic global expansion plans, and reinforcing our vision to become one of the top fragrance and flavor companies globally. Our 100-year journey has been defined by a pursuit of innovation and quality, enriched by rich experience and significant investments in R&D capabilities. These investments have sharpened our ability to creatively deliver solutions tailored to the customer preferences. Over the last year, we have significantly strengthened our talent pool, bringing in high-quality senior personnel from the industry to build our capability for growth in the next leg of growth. Our investments in infrastructure, such as creative development centers, have further solidified our foundation, ensuring we are well-equipped to meet the evolving demands of the market and continue delivering superior growth. Regarding our segmental performance, within our core fragrance vertical, we have strengthened our position in the well-established Indian market while also achieving growth in various new export markets. Our teams are particularly active, executing strategy to penetrate existing and new markets, with particular focus on Southeast Asia, Africa, United States, and other regions. As you may recollect, the company had a 3i focus strategy targeting key markets in India, Italy, and Indonesia. We have solidified our presence in Italy serving the European region, continue to maintain a strong presence in India, and with the new factory commission, Greenfield Facility Commission in Jakarta, Indonesia, during this quarter. This new facility is now operational and strategically poised to further develop our foothold in the key Southeast Asian markets, completing our 3i strategy, strategic initiative which we took in the last five years. Our flavor segment also delivered an encouraging performance this quarter. As we mentioned previously, 
we encountered significant challenges in our global ingredients business in the past years. Our strategic response included implementing a comprehensive backward integration project in India and focusing on improvements of productivity and cost reduction. This has significantly transformed the segment this quarter. These efforts have reversed losses, resulting in a profitable turnaround, and I would add on a sustainable basis. Coming to the update on the fire incident at our Vasuli factory facility, a fragrance facility, we have shifted production to alternate sites to ensure business continuity. This has enabled us to resume full service and maintain adequate capacity to meet all customer demands. While we expect some impact on our quarter one FY25 performance due to this event, we, will be, we believe we will be able to offset this in the subsequent quarters. Regarding the financial impact of the fire, the company has a comprehensive insurance coverage, including for loss of business, loss of profit, which fully covers the damages incurred. The insurance company is currently assessing the cause and extent of the damage. Therefore, we would like to avoid speculation on this uh, account in today's call. Once we have clarity, we will inform the exchanges appropriately and take all questions and answers in the separate call on this matter. To conclude, our immediate focus remains on navigating the aftermath of the fire and efficiently ramping up operations on alternate sites, including the newly commissioned facility in Indonesia, which will support all our exports. Our turnaround initiatives coupled with recent new wins and increasing demand are poised to position us for a strong performance in year FY25. Thank you and I look forward to discussing our results in more detail. On that note, I would request the moderator to open the forum for any questions or suggestions you may have. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Parat Gupta from Fair Value Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, Kedar. Uh, am I audible? Hello? Yeah. 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 Uh, so first, uh, congratulations for a good good set of results. A uh, couple of questions from my side. So first, with respect to the RFQ, so you have mentioned in the presentation that there has been an uh, increase in the order book with respect to the MNCs for the current fiscal year. So if possible, can you quantify the amount, uh, like what kind of order book we are building in from them and going forward, what kind of a run rate uh, we want to execute for FY25 and uh, beyond? Yeah, so we are uh, at the moment for FY25, we are at a run rate of 10 million plus uh, uh, sales uh, projected for the year. We are continuing to work with these projects and as we have indicated, uh, sort of uh, 100 million total available potential. Uh, 10 million of that is already under contract and we will continue to expand this in the years going forward. All right. Uh, also with, re uh, with respect to our Indonesian units, so there we have seen a mention that like uh, we have recently opened up. So what kind of a capital deployment was there in that particular unit and what kind of asset terms we are anticipating out of it? So uh, between uh, 4 and 5 million uh, US dollar was the capital investment in the unit. Uh, we are expecting to fully have full production from June. And what kind of asset turn can we anticipate? Uh, so we have a ballpark 10 million business which it will service on the immediate basis and the additional growth that uh, it will service in the export other regions. So 10 to 12 million uh, revenue will migrate to the Indonesian factory in the first year. Right. So it's family towards meeting out the requi all the requirement from the global MNCs or we have some tie-ups with other institutions out there as well? So we are already doing uh, business of more than 10 million uh, US dollars in the Southeast Asia region, in Asian. 
and uh, having this facility within ASEAN makes it uh, duty free and easy for uh, accessing the ASEAN market. Uh, we build this uh, as one of our uh, next growth pillars. Outside of India, we see uh, Southeast Asia as a good uh, growth uh, region for the global fragrance and flavor markets. Uh, okay. Thanks. Uh, sir, on the CFF front, so there has been a good jump in the profitability. Uh, top line has been muted in, in terms of the single digit uh, single digit growth. Uh, going forward, like what currently, what kind of a utilization levels uh, we are currently working upon both CFF and Holland. Uh, and secondly, like in terms of, is there any enough headroom for growth if we are utilizing the assets at the optimum levels? Yeah, so uh, from a capacity point of view, if you look at the results, we have lost uh, or reduced some of our tolling business in the last couple of years. So we have additional capacity available for our core business. Uh, we are about, I would say, 85% capacity utilization in the European context. We are, uh, therefore, uh, for the FY25, we have no challenge for growth. We should be able to grow 10% uh, thereabouts without any uh, additional capacity constraint. But uh, on a three to five year horizon, we would need to invest in the European fragrance capacity to uh, continue to grow. Right, so of what kind of a KPIX plan, do we have any kind of a KPIX plans at present, like beyond for investing in the European subsidy? So the typical capex would have been three to four million, similar to the Indonesia factory. Uh, we are now evaluating this uh, capex plan uh, in uh, in a view to understand if we want to build some additional capacity to have a, uh, you know support for the Middle East and certain markets where access to the market in the shipping lines and things like this is becoming difficult. Uh, so North Africa, West Africa, and some of the Middle Eastern countries. We are trying to see if we want to have also an uh, opportunity to service them uh, through our European operation. So we will build capacity. Uh, expect to be 3 to 4 million uh, euros. That's the uh, sort of uh, uh, expectation on the investment. It won't be large. Uh, it, uh, we are evaluating and we will revert back once there is any finality on that. And sir, uh, regarding the jump in the gross margin, so can you help us understand what kind of a reasons uh, led to such a sharp increase in the overall gross margin? I think a couple of uh, reasons. One is the global ingredient, which was negative, it has uh, started to deliver uh, much stronger gross margins in the, due to the backward integration and cost reduction uh, that we have undertaken. Uh, in addition, the uh, and the raw material buying strategy that the company has uh, adopted with uh, buying uh, inventories at a lower price, that has resulted in a better uh, realization through the year. All right. Uh, last question from my side, if I'm allowed, sir. Uh, with respect to our global ingredient business itself, so I believe we have invested close to around 150 odd crores in the business. And how do we look at the current business scenario at a time when China has added capacity over the last few years? Because our primary focus was towards backward integration because of the volatility in the RN prices. So any colors about how, what kind of a trend you are seeing across your RM chain and the current business scenario with respect to the global ingredient side? So I think global ingredient side, we are fully backward integrated. We have now uh, entire uh, supply chain within uh, Indian uh, operations or partners in India. So this is helping us to be uh, extremely cost competitive. Uh, we have uh, more than 50% of the market share of the global ingredients globally. So we are the market leader. And uh, we will continue to hold this position vis-a-vis -vis the Chinese competition or other competitors as we have strong uh, strong presence in these products with a long uh, history and uh, good brand and quality so we have we have uh, we are the market leader we can continue to keep our market share right despite the softness in the rm prices coming out from china we we plan to remain profitable for fy25 as well 
Yes, so we have been uh, continuously improving our uh, productivity efficiency and uh, for the last 30 to 40 years on this product range that we are operating. So we have uh, believed that we have very good process efficiency, good productivity. Uh, the main issue in the, in the global ingredient was the uh, raw material dependence on China, which we have cut. And uh, I believe that we are in a very strong position to uh, supply to the global markets. In addition, given the geopolitical scenario, all major customers want to have alternate suppliers and do not want to depend on uh, solely Chinese uh, origin materials. Right. So China Plus One strategy can work out in favor for us. Any order book which we maintain for this segment alone? I think the segment is about uh, 100 crore uh, market and uh, we are uh, more or less uh, 70, 60 or 70 percent of that. Right. Thanks, Kidar. Uh, that's it from my side. I will come back in the question queue for the follow -up. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, if you wish to register for questions, you may press star and one on your touchstone phone. The next question is from the line of Darshil Javiri from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you so much for taking my question. Hope I'm audible. Yeah, you are audible. Yeah, yeah. So, sir, so we had a very good year, Cognitive FI24. So, what kind of uh, revenue growth and margins will you be looking at for FI25 and 26? So we are uh, continuing to be uh, bullish on our growth uh, despite the, uh, uh, the incident in April. Our long-term strategy, our product development and R&D continues uh, unabated. Uh, we are uh, still indicating a 12% CAGR growth for the, this year and uh, next couple of uh, years in the term across the global business. So domestic as well as uh, European and uh, uh, flavor segment. Oh, fair enough, sir. And the margins, because now with the new capacity as well as backward integration, so are currently 16% we've done in FI24, so will it cross that level in FI25 or be similar level, sir? I think at the uh, granular gross margin, there is no challenge to maintain the gross margin that we have today. Uh, on the operating side, due to the uh, changeover in the BCP and the uh, additional operation costs, there will be some effect on, on uh, short term in this quarter, next quarter. But uh, on the longer term, there is no uh, negative impact on either gross margins or uh, product uh, growth or revenue growth. So 16% is sustainable margin? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. And sir, just wanted to know, sir, in terms of any demand scenario environment, do we see some slowdown or some risk that you know that can impact our growth? Uh, there is always uh, current scenario geopolitical risk. If some of the spillovers of some of these uh, global events happens election risk uh, in various countries and geographies. So all of these are macro risks which all of the investor community is uh, aware of at large. Specific to our business, uh, we do not see any additional risk. If there is uh, no widespread recession, we would imagine that we have a continued growth, uh, continued growth of demand. Uh, there will be challenges in the first quarter and a few months when we streamline our uh, supply chain for the new uh, new way of uh, or from the new factories. So that will uh, that will dampen some of the first quarter or first few months results in terms of deferment of sales. We we are looking at uh, increasing lead time from six seven days to uh, two or three weeks uh, in terms of. Uh, our delivery schedules, which means that the first quarter will have a 10 day spillover into the second quarter and so on and so forth. Apart from that, uh, from the demand side, we don't see any uh, any negative impact, either macro or internally or externally. 
ओके ओके फेयर नफ सर थैंक यू सो मच सो दैट्स इट फ्रॉम माय साइड ऑल द बेस्ट सर थैंक यू थैंक यू The next question is from the line of Chintan Cheda from Quest Investment Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening, and congrats on delivering consistent set of numbers. Uh, sir, my first question is related to margins. So, do you see any further scope in improvement of our gross margins? And secondly, with this Malaysian facility coming up. uh what could be the absolute savings of catering to that uh, demand in that uh, southeast asia market and lastly with this washivli production shifting to adjacent facilities so can you just quantify what could be that impact for couple of quarters okay. so uh, three questions first is uh, margin uh, i think the margin at uh, current 44 45% gross margin will be sustainable we will look at maintaining those that kind of margin uh, there is no further expectation of improvement of margins in in this scenario uh, on a longer term basis so that's that's one secondly uh, the question of uh, malaysia actually the facilities in indonesia but uh, to answer your question the southeast asia facility in indonesia will uh, start in june uh, there will be not much impact in terms of the uh, uh, the current business the margin and the operation cost will be the same as in indian factory uh, what we expect is that the growth rates will be faster because the speed to market and the customer confidence on our local deliveries is higher than uh, deliveries coming in from Uh, two week or three week lead time so we expect that we are able to cater to bigger clients including global mnc's to this facility in the region so our growth rate for southeast asia should go up uh, post this facility starting up uh, to answer your uh, impact of washivli uh, i think the full impact and the uh, assessment as i mentioned earlier is still pending we expect to complete that in the next 7 10 days and uh, drop concrete plans of restarting the factory as of now the alternate factories and sites have begun production uh, from uh, first week of may in fact on 30th april the first invoices have gone to the clients so we are in the uh, rapid phase of ramping up uh, to that uh, to that question of uh, what is the impact on the first quarter obviously there is a deferment of some of the sales so some of the uh, due to the increase in lead time some of the sales will get pushed to the second quarter and uh, so on and so forth we hope to have the factory up and running in 6 uh, months time uh, and then uh, start the production in washivli uh, thereafter got it and sir secondly on the tax rate when i looked at our tax rate for this and last year so it is a little bit on the higher side when you look at it comparatively to the earlier years so any particular reasons for that and for next couple of years how should we look at our tax rate so the, so the tax rate uh, what you see now there is a increase because of a defer tax uh, reduction uh, which is a one off uh, on a normalized basis our tax rate will be 29 to 30% okay sir got it thank you thank you the next question is from the line of jatin damania from swan investments please go ahead good evening sir thank you for the opportunity shema even uh, so your uh, a lot muffled your voice is echoing if you are using the speaker phone maybe request to use the handset mode please yeah now it's audible yes sir please go ahead yeah, yeah. So, so in your initial remark of the previous participant, you indicated a growth rate of 12% in terms of revenue. So, just wanted to understand: is this 12% inclusive of the uh, MNC order and the contribution that we will get from the Jakarta facility? So, the Jakarta facility will only be uh, migration of the business from India to the Jakarta facility. that will free up capacity in india which we will use for middle east and indian uh, domestic uh, servicing the customers in india in the middle east uh, africa regions so it's an additional capacity uh, in the current scenario that is uh, 
timely and uh, it will help us to further improve our service levels in indian uh, indian basis so so that means that this additional capacity will contribute to a incremental revenue right so 12% growth rate on the base business seems to be little bit conservative as compared to the order book guidance that you have given in terms of the mnc and the southeast asian market opportunity that we are seeing it i think on the on the longer term uh, the opportunity is there the uh, challenge we are facing to the uh, incident we want to be conservative and give you uh, what is uh, uh, what is the scenario today um, with the uh, full supply chain restored we can uh, look at much higher growth rates going forward but i mean since we already started a supplying from the month of may i mean last end of april so the loss was only for 10 20 days if i'm not wrong but from the june onward we will be back into operation so i guess next 9 months will be a good for us as compared to the first quarter so i mean unable to digest this 12% yeah, I, I, i understand that but the problem is that this year we will not clock 360 days because this 10 days will go in the first quarter of next year the sale of 30 40 crores which would be normally a, a 10 day uh, and so second question if you can have an understanding the mnc order definitely you said the order book has doubled as compared to fi24 so in the current revenue of fi24 what was the contribution of this from the new mnc client so as i mentioned this year we expect to be more than 10 million so last year it was half of that uh, okay and the margins will be at the high end as compared to what we are delivering right now right on the broader basis yeah on the net margin basis these are uh, these are good products on the gross margin so they are uh, high volume to put products so we have low uh, uh, low operating cost per kilo but the gross margin at the per kilo level will be lower but the net margins are the same as our normal business okay net margin so so now with this improvement in the profitability and definitely we will see a free cash flow also getting free so i mean how shall one look at the debt reduction schedule um so we are at a ballpark uh, debt between 500 to 550 in the last couple of quarters we expect that the uh, ongoing uh, capex is that we need to incur to restore the facility while the uh, insurance covers it there will be some net uh, cash flow issue where we need to fund before the final uh, payout from the insurance uh, despite that i think our net debt level should remain below 550 throughout the year and uh, operating revenue uh, and profit uh, will bring the overall debt uh, down as we as we go through the year so is it possible to assume the salary close the year below 500 or crores because the capex for the year will probably take another 6 months or 9 months for us to decide whether to go ahead with that capex or not yeah no i don't want to uh, speculate on the year end the uh, till we have a clarity on the uh, claim and survey of the uh, site once we know our capex plan and recovery plan in the vasuli factory clearly we can put out the end of the year uh, basis at the time of our first year the first quarter results okay so sure, sir thank you that's all from my side all the best thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Harsh Shah from Dimensional Securities. Please go ahead. Mr. Shah, your line is unmuted. You can proceed with your question. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. This is one question from my end. Uh, since we have already started supplying to this major uh, MNC, which is definitely a breakthrough deal for us. uh besides that are we in this in active discussion with any other uh, mnc or will we open up door for other mnc to do business with us can you give some uh, highlight on that the short answer is yes we are engaging with multiple clients we have been engaging with them uh, on number of years and uh, we continue to engage with other mnc global mnc as well as large corporate clients in 
both India, Southeast Asia, Middle East, and Europe. Okay. And and uh, another question is: Are we seeing any benefits of China Plus One? It's been a couple of years since this entire discussion around China Plus One started. So, are we seeing any benefits out of that? And at the same time, since China is opening up their capacities, are we facing any competition, a competitive pressure from them in our South Asia or European markets? So the only uh, direct competition product for us is the global ingredient business, where, as I alluded, we have the majority market share. We have more than 50% market share of the product. Um, we have taken the steps to be uh, most cost competitive uh, on the global basis, so we are not uh, uh, threatened by Chinese competition from a cost point of view or pricing point of view. Uh, we believe we are one of the uh, lowest cost producers of these products in the world. Okay. And sir, what is the outlook on the raw material cost? Uh, I mean, if you compare uh, the Q4, FY24 and the prices currently, are the prices stable and what is the outlook going ahead? Prices are stable with, uh, I would say, upward uh, movement, slight uh, improvement of uh, prices since uh, I would say February or March when they were at the uh, lowest level. All right, all right, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bharat Shet from Quest Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, Kedar and Rohit. Congratulations on good uh, performance. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, you have to understand our business, I mean, growth from, say, 12 percent. So, barring this, I mean, earlier we had, had an understanding kind of 12 percent taker growth and plus MNC new contract. So, forget this year, I mean, but then how do we see that business, our top line growing? So, if you can give a little more color, so this year, of course, as you said, we will maybe losing 40, 50 crore kind of a sale. Barring that, how do we see our growth rate? I mean, uh, our growth rate, like we mentioned, the uh, business growth rate is linked to the product development and capability to accept and take new business. Uh, we have been steadily increasing our spend on the R&D and product development, and including this year, we will continue to spend on on future growth. Uh, we will look at uh, additional geographies beyond India for growth. So, Southeast Asia clearly with the factory which is set up this year, we will look at a much faster growth rate there. Global ingredient investments are also uh, looking where we, we are looking at a faster growth rate uh, in the near future. And we are expanding our operation and uh, footprint in Europe. And we have started some inroads or some basic work in the U.S. market for the next phase of growth. Saturated or uh, market where we have good uh, good market share, we see a 8 to 10 percent growth rate on a sustainable regular CAGR basis. And uh, additional geographies, additional customers or new customers where we don't have a existing business will ramp up the uh, growth rate to 12 percent and above in terms of a CAGR group. Okay, fair. So, and second question, earlier we were looking, barring this uh, prior incident, that we were thinking that gross margin will sustain at higher level, I mean, what we have reported, and playing out some kind of operating leverage but whenever that operating leverage will start playing, kicking in from the second half, do we have uh, some kind of a room of a higher EBITDA margin and which was our, I mean, uh, kind of a thing we were expecting? I think uh, quarter on quarter we would have seen the EBITDA margin improving as our operating leverage on the factory uh, and on the sales and cost basis. So we have continuously improved our uh, uh, not gross margin but at the beta level and uh, we are uh, extremely uh, confident of continuing to do that once our Oshili factory is restored in the later part of this year. Yes, so over a long medium term our margin could size a room to grow higher, correct? Uh, 
that fair understanding that's right okay and coming on the the deleveraging the balance sheet of, of course this otherwise we had built up a good amount of uh, low cost inventory earlier as indicated so once we uh, start we consuming and bring down the work in the inventory at normalized level so what kind of uh, additional cash flow do we expect and how that can uh, affect i mean uh, help us in improving our debt level if this new capex will not happen i mean at wasabli yeah so i i mean uh, i will give the answer uh, without any uh, effect of the incident uh, in a normal course we would have reduced the inventory plus free cash flow of roughly 150 crores in the year uh, at this time uh, i expect the same quantum in absolute number but uh, cash flow effect of that may be deferred because we will pay first and then some part of the capex will be reimbursed by the uh, insurance so we we need to understand that uh, as you alluded inventory was also much higher level than normal level so we had uh, maybe almost 50 crores extra inventory at the end of the year last uh, year as compared to the year before uh, we also had a bigger growth uh, growth trajectory so both of these uh, would have been uh, not getting normalized through the year um, so we are on track for that we we will see that almost a 100 crore reduction in inventory through the year as we continue our operations and uh, on the uh, actual cash flow of that uh, we will have to little bit uh, do the working on the uh, insurance and uh, you know steps with the insur and negotiate with the insurance uh, Teams to uh, expedite the uh, cash flows. Okay, and coming to with this global MNC account opening, so earlier we did not have any large reference point. Now with uh, this uh, global MNC account opening up, and we have a good reference point. So are we expecting that some kind of a uh, expediting our earlier approval than now? Yeah, so we continue to work with the global MNC and a few other uh, larger corporate clients. Uh, that work is continuing. Uh, the challenges uh, that we face are more tactical in terms of getting quickly the capacity on stream. Uh, on a strategic basis, on a mid-term, multi-year basis, we are continuing to engage with our clients and R&D and uh, ensuring that our product pipeline is continuing. the last question on opening of this us subsidiary how is it going to really help so uh, obviously there are some large mnc which are headquartered in the us so we are looking at that in, in the next phase of growth to uh, address these uh, large mnc companies headquartered in us as a, as a further plank for growth in all the markets are we seeing some kind of a benefit i mean early benefit or still it's a little too early so we are building the capability it is uh, basically uh, next phase of growth we will need to build this in the us market as well because the uh, uh, global mnc's are operating in all markets us market is normally one of their big uh, uh, big market so we want to keep our presence in the us and european market as a, which is more than i would say more than 50% of the global uh, global market share for these this and last question for rohit so do we have because of this indonesia we have any uh, financial uh, benefit or anything no so financial benefit uh, There is, there is something, but which is not that substantial. The idea of setting up an Indonesia factory is part of our 3i strategy, uh, where speed to market is critical. Today we are servicing Southeast Asia from India, and uh, and that that will give us further leg in the growth. Okay. Then we have a duty, uh, so it it comes in the ASEAN region. So we get a duty free benefit from serving from Indonesia as well. okay that will make us more competitive yeah yeah okay thank you and all the best thank you
The next question is from the line of Dilip Kumar Sahu from Enface. Please go ahead. Yeah. Am I audible? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, being an investor for six odd years, uh, I had a, a concern regarding the volatility that we have gone through, particularly in the uh, first four or five years, in 18 to 22, 23. Last two years has been, of course, uh, quite stable. Uh, our volatility emerged from two uh, areas. One was the revenue uh, fluctuation, uh, which came primarily because of us losing market share in the small and uh, and, uh, and mid uh, sector. And second was the raw material uh, price fluctuation, and that impacted the gross margin. My question is, the current uptrend we see in the small and uh, medium uh, enterprises, what has fundamentally changed? How are we able to gain uh, this uh, market share? Uh, and uh, the raw material, uh, we had an initiative to uh, you know, move from China. Uh, how much of impact it is having on the profitability? And these are the first two questions. So uh, I think the global ingredient part of the business is uh, directly reflecting the uh, change away from China, and you can see it in the results of that business. On the uh, overall gross margin of the business, there is uh, not much impact. Or it would be less than 1% of moving away from China. But it's also important that we are not uh, having uh, supply chain shocks because we have domestic uh, suppliers and local local vendors for these products. So that is the additional benefit by moving away from China supply. Uh, to your first question, the small and medium uh, customers we have always been servicing through the 100 plus years of our existence and we continue to service. We are well penetrated in this market. Uh, startup companies, e-commerce companies, many of the uh, new brand companies, they are aware of our company and uh, we have a very good uh, marketing team addressing their uh, specific requirements. So this is uh, how we have continued to grow our uh, small and mid-sized customers and we will continue to support them. Yeah, so, but we are making strides there, right? We are improving our market share that has been your commentary. So I'm just trying to find out is there something fundamentally changed in the small and medium uh, engagement that we have. The fundamental change is the advent of e-commerce. There is more people who are now coming into uh, SME on the FMCG side, uh, kind of new entrepreneurs. There was a time when uh, I would say uh, 70s, 80s when uh, new entrepreneurs uh, started in FMCG and uh, in in the post 2005 uh, couple of uh, decades till maybe early 2020s uh, there was a scenario where only the bigger fmcg companies continued to grow and there were not a lot of startups or small uh, companies i think as a result of some of the high visibility listings and e-commerce taking uh, central stage in many uh, consumers' uh, mind as well as uh, entrepreneurs' mind. A lot of entrepreneurs who are starting uh, new brands or small brands or online brands are looking to uh, to put products with uh, kind of FMCG fragrant or flavored products on the market. That has helped us to uh, start again on the small and mid-sized companies. Sure. It's more a general industry trend rather than specific to our company. Sure, sure. My second question was, um, you know, for uh, so many years that uh, I'm observing, we are between that 9 to 12 percent kind of a growth rate, um, uh, sometimes uh, less, sometimes more. Uh, what is what is that? Uh, uh, I mean, I'm trying to figure out: is there a possibility of breaking free of this? A 10, 11, 12 percent kind of a growth rate, and go to a mid-teen, high-teen kind of a growth rate. Is, is is there a possibility? Because you know uh, there are various reasons. Sometimes we lose uh, business in certain client base. Sometimes raw material fluctuations. Sometimes uh, we have incidents like the fire, etc. But 
net net we we are at a 9 10% kind of a growth rate including our acquisitions uh, across so yeah so uh, i think on the last two years we have continued to grow 12 12% and higher cagr uh, without any significant acquisition uh, or i would say organic growth of the acquisition so while we may have had acquisition we are talking about the incremental growth on the acquisition and not the original uh, value so we have done more than 12% cagr in the last two years uh as you mentioned the fire incident we are still early days we will uh, be able to recover and then uh, uh, service our clients on a regular basis so there is a, a part where i think the 12% can slowly inch up but it's not an industry where suddenly you can uh, grow at 20 25% it's not uh, uh, you know it's a innovation and continuous innovation industry so as as time goes we are building our capability to do more faster growth and uh, we are seeing the results of that year on year as we grow faster and faster and we, we are able to uh, put out a 12% cagr and that 12 will become 13 14 and so on so forth but it's not a industry where you can say 12% can become 25% or 20% overnight sure sure no i was looking at mid teens but fine i understand um that, no, my last question is regarding the r and d uh, investment uh, we are we are making where exactly is it directed is it to the new markets like uh, indonesia and asian countries or is it uh, europe or us uh, where we are having a new setup so we have uh, the r and d capabilities in built across three regions which is the italy which is europe uh, india and indonesia all the three uh, regions we are supporting with r and d uh, and sales and development and local manufacturing sure okay thank you for answering my question thank you the next question is from the line of pradeep rawat from yogi capital please go ahead Hi. Good afternoon, good evening, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, my I have two questions. Uh, first is regarding our utilization at, at Indian facility. So, what is our utilization at Indian facility? Which facility? Indian facility. Both. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt. We didn't get you. We are not able to comprehend your question. yeah I, i was asking about the utilization rate at the indian facilities okay yeah so I, at the moment uh, you know given that the vasuli factory is uh, uh, not operational fully we have uh, shifted the production to the two sites consolidated our flavor site into one so our uh, cap- capacity uh, utilization is excess of 85% okay and my next question is regarding the industry trend so uh, what are the current industry trend and what are your outlook for uh, fragrance and flavors i think the industry uh, trend is quite positive uh, there is a sense of uh, sort of calm before the storm in terms of the growth a lot of the uh, rural markets or the traditional fmcg is seeing so uh, uptick uh, i believe that post the uh, election the domestic uptick will uh, will resume uh, internationally we are of course not seeing any slowdown and our business continues to grow both on okay. flavor as well as fragrances yeah yeah thank you and all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of rohit from samatwa investments please go ahead uh good evening sir uh, i just had one question uh, uh on the european demand i just wanted to understand both for flavors as well as fragrances uh, what has been the demand uh, scenario in europe and uh, any new geographies that we are uh, planning to get in the european re- region so that's my only question so, so european when we talk about europe we are largely talking about italy and netherlands as the first uh, place where we have our operations and our demand 
we have been expanding the demand into further geographies like germany and adjacent countries uh, east europe and germany is now significant target for us to expand our uh, business in europe thank you so much sir that's it thank you the next question is from the line of madhav agarwal from sg investments please go ahead Yeah, Madhav, we can't hear you. Madhav, sir, your line is unmuted. Please proceed Hello. with the question. Hi, thank you for taking the question. I just had a question on the order book. Uh, you indicated that 10 million numbers. Just wanted to confirm, would that be USD or euros? USD, USD, USD. And uh, so this would be executable over uh, what period, sir? This is the order book annual basis. Annual. And for the next year, what kind of growth can we expect in the order book? Uh, we have uh, so we have been working on a multi-year contract in engaging with these clients. Our entire uh, expected potential is 100 million. Of this, the uh, 10 million is what we have already uh, bagged. We continue to work with them and continue to engage for additional business. Okay. All right. So that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ganesh Shetty, who's an individual investor. Please go ahead. Congratulations, sir, for good setup number. I just want to have one clarification regarding Washibali. Uh, whether the learnings from this incident have been uh, transferred to other uh, manufacturing units, whereas we can make our company, you know, BHS strong from all respects. Can you please throw some light on this? Okay, so that uh, learnings and the uh, the uh, kind of uh, uh, Learnings from this and the net uh, improvements uh, have already been initiated and uh, they will take place uh, as we go along uh, I mean, the operationally and uh, in terms of infrastructure uh, capex is required. So all of that has been, been done. And uh, the flavor division of the washibali uh, section of uh, location, whether that is intact and working uh, in full capacity, sir? That's correct. The, the flavor division is intact and working in full capacity. Okay, sir. That's all for me and all the best and very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as our last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you. I hope we have been able to answer your questions. Should you feel need for any further clarification or would, to, would like to know more about the company, please feel free to contact our team or CDR India. Thank you once again for taking the time to join us on this call. On behalf of SH Kelkar and Company Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.